Have you been asked to find the perimeter of several items such as this and you've got fractions involved and you're not sure how to approach it? Well, you've come to the right place. If you don't know me, I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to help you solve this problem in today's video. But first, I want to say something wonderful is going to happen for you very soon. So be on the lookout for it. And now back to the video. In this problem, we're trying to find the perimeter and there are fractions. So let's look at how to deal with that. And uh, first of all, I do have an earlier video on adding and subtracting fractions. And you may want to start with that one. I've linked it up here in the corner because that will do the adding and subtracting of the fractions portion. Um, I'll do some of that here, but I may speed through it. So if you want a more detail, I would take a look at that video. In this problem, a friend bought a framed quilt. The dimensions are shown in the image. So we have an outer frame, and then we have the quilt on the inside. And we're, we've got an unknown height for the frame and an unknown width for the frame. And it tells us that from the top of the frame to the top of the quilt is three and one third feet. And from the bottom of the quilt to the bottom of the frame is three and one third feet. So it's centered vertically. And then from the left side of the frame to the left side of the quilt, it's one and two fifths feet. And from the right side of the quilt to the right side of the frame, it's also one and two fifths feet. So again, it's centered horizontally. And the quilt, its height is five and three quarters feet. And its width is three and a quarter feet. So let's see what the questions are going to be asking us. First of all, it wants to know what is the perimeter of the quilt in feet? And remember, perimeter is the distance all the way around. So if you were to build a little mini fence around here, how much fencing would you need? Or if you took a ball of string and started the string here and went around all four corners and came back to the starting point, how long would the string be? And since these are feet, it's going to be in feet for the perimeter. Number two asks, what's the width of the frame? So we don't know the width. So we're going to have to find out the width of this frame. Part three says, what is the total height? The total height is from the bottom of the frame to the top of the frame. We're going to have to calculate that. And what is the total perimeter of the frame? Now we're looking at the perimeter of the entire frame. Likewise, we're going to go all around the outside. And how long of a distance is that? Let's dive in. Question number one says, what's the perimeter of the quilt? So we want to know this distance all the way around. Let's write some of this down. So question number one. Perimeter of quilt. And what information do we have? Well, first of all, what is a, the perimeter? Well, that's the height plus the height because it's both sides, one, two, and it's the width plus the width. So it's plus width plus width, and that is equal to the perimeter. All right, so we could do two times the height and two times the width. We could do it that way as well. And that's another way to approach it. So let's look at how we can do this. All right, so height times height would be 2h plus width times width, width is 2w is equal to the perimeter. So I've simplified our formula as well. And Height is sometimes called length, and so it's sometimes length and width. So don't be confused, but because this particular problem uses height, I'm going to use that as our measure here, height. So we have the formula. Do we have any of this information? Well, we've got the height, that's this line here, 
and this tells us it's five and three quarter feet. So I'm going to write this down that the height is equal to five and three quarter feet. And do we have the width? The width we're told from here to here is three and a quarter feet. Three and a quarter feet. All right, so let's now see what we can do with this. All right, so we can start out with All right, let's go ahead and start filling these things in. So we've got two times the height, and I'm going to just pull out the H and put a box there so we can fill in that amount, plus two times the width. I'm going to just put an empty box there and just label it W is equal to the perimeter. Our height is five and three quarters feet, and our width is three and a quarter feet. Now we're going to need to multiply the two times this and the two times that. To make sure that we don't make any mistakes with this, I'm going to change this mixed number. It's a mixed number because it's got a whole number and a fraction. I'm going to change it into a improper fraction. So the way we do that, I'm going to write it off here to the side. So we can do five and three quarters. I take the five and I multiply it by four. I multiply it by the denominator. So five times four is 20, and then I add the numerator. So again, I'm gonna multiply the what the whole number is times the denominator, and then I add the numerator and I put it all over the denominator. So five times four is 20, plus three is 23 fourths, 23 fourths. I'm going to put that over here. So I've got 2 times 23 fourths. And I'm going to add to that. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. 3 and a quarter. If I multiply 3 times 4, I have 12 plus 1 is equal to 13. So 13 fourths. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13. 13 fourths. I, use, I just keep the same denominator. So it's 2 times 13 fourths is equal to the perimeter. So far, so good. Now, I'm going to multiply these. When you multiply, you don't need a common denominator. We can just think about the 2 being over 1, right? 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2, and we just multiply straight across. So if we multiply straight across, we have 23 times 2 is 46, and we keep the same denominator because it's 1 times 4 is 46 plus, and again, multiply straight across. I'm just bringing that plus down. 2 times 13 is 26, and I it's a 1 times 4, so that same denominator on the bottom. So that's our perimeter so far. So far, get so good. Now I just need to add the 46 and the 26 because we have a common denominator already. So that's a 72, because 46 plus 26 is 72, all over 4 is equal to our perimeter. Now, we probably don't want to leave it in that form. Uh, that's the number of feet, and that's the perimeter, but we want to probably change it back to a mixed number. And the best way to do that is to divide the denominator into the numerator, and I use old school division. So I've got the 4, and I'm going to divide it into 72. Do you remember this old school division like this? And so I'm going to take the 4, and I divide it into the 7. It goes one time, because 2 times 4 would be 8. That'd be too much. So I got a 1. 1 times 4 is 4. I subtract it from the 7. I draw a line. 7 minus 4 is a 3. And then I bring down my 2. So if I've got 32 divided by 4 is 8. And 8 times 4 is 32. Minus that 0, there's no remainders. So that is our answer. Our answer to number 1 is 18 feet. And it's linear. It's a line. It's, remember, we talked about the string.
So a string is measured linearly. There's no squaring. It's 18 feet. So the answer to question number one would be 18 feet. Now let's look at the next one. Let's look at problem number two. Problem number two asks, what is the width of the frame? What is the width of the frame? So we're looking here and we want to figure out this entire width from here to here. What information do we have? So we have several pieces of information. We have this distance all the way to here plus this plus that is going to equal this bottom, right? Because it's a, a rectangle. Everywhere across is going to be the same distance. So I can start here and go to there. And I've got one and two fifths feet. And then I'm going to add to it this distance, just the width of the actual quilt. And here we have three and a quarter feet. So I'm going to write three and a quarter feet. We have the same um, we have the same units each time, so that's fortunate. And then we're going to add this last bit here, one and two fifths feet. is equal to the width. I'm going to put that as W. All right. Now, so far, so good. Now, I do see we've got this here and this here are exactly the same, right? So if we're adding them together, I can say that's 2 times 1 and 2 fifths. And I'm, I'm going to drop the units for right now because everything's feet, just so we save a little room and, and it's not so messy. So I took care of this and this, and we're going to add to that three and a quarter. And that's going to be equal to the width. So far, so good. Now we're going to again multiply this, and I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to turn this into a mixed number. You can do it without doing it, but I'm going to do that to make it clear. So as you get more advanced, you can you can just multiply it out. But I'm going to do this to be absolutely clear. So again, I'm going to start out. I've got one and two fifths. And do you remember our trick? We take the one and we multiply it by five. So that's five. And then we add the top six, seven. That's seven fifths. Right? One times five plus two is seven, and we keep the same denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as two times seven fifths plus three quarters equal to the width. So far, so good. If you're finding this helpful so far, I really appreciate those of you that are giving this video a thumbs up. That really helps get this out to others. And if you'd share this to your classmates, anyone who is struggling with this, and they can also get the benefit of it. So we're going to multiply straight across. And again, we imagine this is over 1, because 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. And we multiply straight across. When we're multiplying, we don't need a common denominator. So 2 times 7 is 14. And our denominator is still 5 plus 3 and 1 quarter. And these are all in feet is equal to our width. So now we're going to add, right? We're going to add. And the problem is, is I don't have a common denominator over here. we got a 5 and a 4. We've got to get a common denominator. So First of all, let me go ahead and get this, move this three up into it and make it a mixed number. So I've got three and a quarter. And again, you don't have to do this step. You will eventually get to where you don't have to do it, but I want to, so you can see what we're doing. So three times four is 12 plus one is 13. So this can be rewritten as 13 fourths. Three times four is 12 plus one is 13 all over that same denominator. So let me rewrite this as 14 fifths plus 13 fourths is equal to the width. 
And again, we are adding fractions, and anytime we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So what is the common denominator? I like to write them out like this, 14 fifths, and I write the other one below it. You'll see this in that video that I referenced above or earlier. And if you can't think of a number that they both go into, then just multiply them by each other. 4 times 5 is 20. So I know that 20 always works. And whenever you have two numbers, you can multiply them by each other, and that will give you a common denominator. Uh, there may be a number that is less than that that would be a good common denominator. But if you are short on time, then you can just choose that. So to turn the 4 into the 20, we have to multiply it by 5. And if we're doing it to the denominator, we're going to multiply the, top, the numerator by 5 as well. So these numbers, the numerator and denominator, have to be the same. Likewise, to turn a 5 into a 20, we're going to multiply that by a 4. Because remember, we said we multiply them by each other. And if I'm multiplying the denominator by 4, I've got to multiply the numerator by 4. So we know 4 times 5 is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. Let's take care of the top part of it. And I can pull out my calculator, or you can do it by hand if you want to. It's uh, 14 times 4 is equal to 56. So it's 56 20s. And here, clear it, we've got 13 times 5 is equal to 65. So those are two new fractions that have a common denominator. So the 14 fifths is rewritten as 56 over 20. And we're going to add to that. The 13 fourths is rewritten as 65 twentieths. And that's equal to the width. So far, so good. I've got a common denominator. So I know the answer to this addition is going to have a 20 in it. And then I can just take the clear this and I take 56 and I can add to it the 65 and that gives me 121 and we still know it's in feet because nothing's changed on it that's the width now chances are you you're not going to want it in an improper fraction like that so we're going to turn it back into a mixed number and do you remember my trick for it put it down in the comments if you remember yes that's right we're going to divide the denominator into the numerator using old school division. And we can just write this as 121 divided by 20. All right? So what would we, how many times does 20 go into 12? It doesn't. So we're going to have to do a little bit larger. So five, so 20 goes into, a, so we're going to go over to here. 20 goes into 100 five times, right? Six times 20 would be 120. So let's go with that, 6. So if we got a 6 here, 6 times 20 is 120 minus, that brings me down to a 1. Our 1 is our remainder, and this is how we're going to write the answer. This is your whole number. Whatever's on top of this division is the whole number, so our width is equal to 6 and then you take this remainder, that's your numerator, and this number here is your denominator still. So 6 and 1 20th, and it's still in feet. That's the answer to part 2. 6 and 1 20th feet. All right. So we've got still two more questions to go, and this video is long already, so I'm going to put that in a part two. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you'd never miss a video, and you'll see when part two comes out. Also, if you want to support the channel and get more detailed information and be able to communicate directly with me, I do have a membership program. You can become a member of this channel right next to the subscribe button is a join. You can join it there and look at the details there. And uh, we've got a lot of wonderful members that are signing up to get more information just like this. So keep your grade alive and subscribe. Thank you.